Time to get out of bed, up and Adam. It's a beautiful new Thursday morning. Welcome from my side. My name is Graham Richards. And I'm Katlaka Maboye. And always so good to be in your company. Yes, thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm. So early in the morning, hopefully you got that first cup of ready with you. Kind of just <sighs> taking in the temperatures of the day, isn't it? Yeah. It's cold. It's cold, It's man. freezing, man. I I they say spring has sprung, but not quite yet. Um, but <laughs> um, we'll save it. So, so Kat was asking me, do you feel good? Do you really feel good this morning? I think I do. I think I'm starting to warm up to this day. I think yeah. it's going to be an awesome day. And I'm feeling optimistic because we are still in Josie, or at least our Jamie is still in Josie, living her best life in the city of gold. And this morning, she gets to wake up with an incredible human being, performing artist, uh, an amazing powerhouse in her own right, Nadia Nakai. That's yes, amazing. Please. That's going to be what so, so awesome, good. awesome, awesome opportunity. Yeah, mm. she's got some exclusive news about uh, a new album. And we're also the first to hear about it as Jamie crosses live from Johannesburg. But back here in studio, we're also encouraging behavioral changes through recycling as we meet the team from uh, Regionize who are making a change in their community as well. So that's also very, very cool. I, I love these, these stories that are just kind of starting to blossom now as, you know, we've entered le level two mm. lockdown. And so it, it, it's kind of like the, the entire social consciousness is also waking up. Th that. There is a buzz, but it's different. We've changed. <laughs> this lockdown has changed us and there is a new sense of innovation, which I absolutely love. So things have changed around yeah. here as well. Um, we are obviously broadcasting a shorter show from, eight, uh, from six until eight o'clock this morning to help our matrix with a bit of revision after that. But don't worry, you still get your extra dose of entertainment on our Expresso Facebook page. And we go live and we're going to be having a little bit of Fortnite fun, our Fortnite tournament, dude. Our are Battle you, Royale, it, it rocked so hard. Our team won two Battle Royales on back to back. That's amazing. <laughs> just insane. So if you're a Fortnite fan, That's stick so cool. around for that just after eight o'clock. We'll go live on Facebook with Grant Hines. But let's meet the rest of this gorgeous team ready to kickstart the day. I can see someone is feeling good this morning. Morning, hey gang. Guys. Of course, of course, of course. You feel like magic. Are we not indeed? Always <laughs> feeling like magic. A very good morning to you, South Africa. Hey, Kamala, I'm Kukusha, Adam. And I'm Raul. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us as we kickstart this magic. And of course, as you heard, an exciting episode, something mm -hmm. that is so true to my heart. We're looking at being more conscious, being more aware. We're recycling or we're upcycling. Mm. And that's obviously the conversation that we're having on social media this morning is, of course, as you guys are aware that recycling is becoming so much more important and our ecological footprint is of a growing importance. How do you reduce, reuse, and recycle in your home? Kukla, have you been one to recycle much at all? Oh, I... You reuse more than recycle. Yeah. First of all, I try not to, well, I do not litter. That's staple mm. number one. Everyone should live by that rule. And secondly, if I go shopping, I use plastic bags that I've, I have have in my cupboard. Okay, I'm so pretty sure we all have that cupboard yeah. with plastic <laughs> bags, etc. But I'm trying to use less and less plastic bags. Um, we, I started using the reusable straw. Ooh, so nice. it's just small Beautiful. changes like Beautiful. that, just in my personal life and just the way that I conduct things in my own home. How about you? Me, I'm, I live it, I wear it. I'm literally wearing shoes that are recycled right now. They're really? No, these bad boys are made from 17 recycled plastic bottles. Wow! And then the, and then the material itself is made from like corn yarn. So I live by the fact that we need to be environmentally friendly and I want to be a product of that product as well. But I love that, Ryle. Yeah, any little bit counts though. So you don't have to go so extreme as I do. But let us know on our social media channels, of course, as we kickstart this epic, epic Thursday, guys. But let's kick it off and see what's happening in the news. <laughs> Just gone four minutes past the hour. Here's a first look at the news headlines this morning. On the national news front, ESCOM has announced more stage four load shedding for today due to the cold weather being experienced around the country and persistent generation constraints. Yesterday started with stage two load shedding, but was stepped up to stage four, uh, this at 3 p.m. Today's load shedding will end at 10 tonight. Load shedding will persist throughout the week as ESCOM teams work around the clock to return as many generation units to service as possible. ESCOM has urged South Africans to reduce electricity 
energy usage to ease the pressure on the system. Meanwhile, Durban musicians, artists, event managers, entertainment venue owners and technical personnel yesterday hosted a live performance on the N3 in, pro in protest of lockdown laws which impacted their business. The transportable stages brought the freeway east and westbound to a standstill for almost two hours. The protesters dressed in black complained of difficulties to make ends meet since the shutdown of the entertainment industry in March. Now, among others, they wanted the government to extend the curve few from 10 to 12 p.m. 35 of them were arrested and held at the Westville police station. On the international news front, Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny uh, was poisoned with Novichok, a nerve agent, Germany's government yesterday said. Navalny was airlifted to Berlin, or f to Berlin for treatment after falling ill during a flight in Russia's Serbia, uh, Siberia region last month. He has been in a coma since. His team says he was poisoned on pre President Vladimir Putin's orders. The Kremlin has dismissed the allegation. Meanwhile, the U.S. has said it is deeply troubled that Navalny was poisoned in Russia and that it will work with the international community to hold those in Russia accountable where the evidence leads. A court yesterday granted bail to award-winning Zimbabwean journalist Hopwell Chinono, uh, who was arrested in July for tweeting in support of anti-government protests. After three previous attempts at freedom, Chinono was ordered to pay bail of 10,000 Zimbabwe dollars by High Court Judge Tawanda Chitapi, uh, who declared that the magistrate who had earlier denied him bail had been misdirected in his decision. Zimbabwean opposition politician Jacob Ngarivume was also granted bail on his fourth attempt since being detained on the uh, 20th of July for calling protests against corruption and the country's economic crisis. Now, next, how animals in Lebanon rushed to save Beirut's most vulnerable residents. The people of Beirut in Lebanon have endured much hardship in past decades, but 4th of August of this year was one of their darkest days ever. For on that day, many residents of the Lebanon port city lost their lives when a huge, a huge, a huge warehouse rather, stocked with ammonium nitrate unexpectedly exploded. Buildings crumbled to the ground. Shocked and dazed, residents milled around in sheer disbelief. Beirut was in tatters. Countless pets were wounded by shattered glass and falling debris. However, members of Animals Lebanon were soon scouring the streets to bring pets to safety and render medical attention. Some 300 volunteers joined the efforts in the aftermath of the disaster, feeding milk bottles to mewing kittens and coaxing frightening dogs from underneath cars. They helped to restore hope. Jason Meir, director of Animals Lebanon, said, we've been able to make so many people happy by reuniting them with their lost animals. Though people's lives were left in ruins, the return of their cherished pets brought them great consolation. And indeed, in a time of unfathomable, unfathomable tragedy, we are reminded of what we need the most, which is each other. Well, that's it for the news at 6 o'clock. We'll have another report at 7 right now. Here's a first look at the reports from the sporting world with Graham. We kick it off with local football and it is going down to the wire. Kaiser Chiefs and Mamelodi Sundowns remained level on points after the penultimate round of fixtures in the Premier Soccer League last night. The Amakosi beat Chippa United 1-0 at the Orlando Stadium, whilst the Brazilians they thrashed Polokwane City 3-0 at Loftus Fairsfall to give themselves the best possible chance. So the teams are now level on 53 points. Chiefs do remain at the top of the standings, though, on goal difference. The 2019-2020 PSL season will go down to the wire, as I said, on Saturday. Today, when Chiefs face Baraka and Sundowns take on Black Leopards, is there an upset in the offing? We'll have to wait until 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon to find out. The non to 10 is not the best news to kickstart today. South Africa's Lloyd Harris unfortunately crashed out of the U.S. Open after losing 7-6, 4-6, 6-1, 6-4 to 7-seed David Goffin of Belgium in the men's singles title race in New York. In the men's doubles tournament, another shock. Seven seeds, a South African, of course, Raven Klaassen and his Austrian partner, Oliver Marach, they fell to a surprise 6-3, 7-6 first round defeat to Philip Oswald and Marcus Daniel. And staying with tennis but on the ladies' draw, turning to the women's singles title race, the 23-time Grand Slam winner Serena Williams looks on track, beating fellow American Christy Ahn 7-5, 6-3 to advance to the US Open second round. 38-year-old won in an hour and a half. She continues to chase a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title. She now faced Russian Margarita Jisparian. 
in round two. Zarina's older sister Venus, she crashed out of the tournament after losing 3-6-5-7 to Czech 20th seed Karolina Muchova. More on those stories on the top of the hour right now. Let's greet the day with some beautiful sunrise pictures and see what the weather has in store. Let's get the day started on the right note by knowing what the weather is like in your part of the country. Mbumele Longai captured the stunning sunrise picture from Peter Maritzburg. Your low for the day in Bumelelo is 11 degrees with an afternoon temperature of 27 degrees. Now moving over to Alberton with Louise G. Sherry who shared this fiery image of the sun making way for a brand new day from Maybury Park. Do expect some grey skies today as it is going to be a cloudy day with temperatures ranging from 10 to 23 degrees. Thank you so much for your sunrise pictures please continue to share them on our social media platforms and we will show them live on the show uh, every single day now in total an unprecedented 15 weather records in the country have fallen since the weekend one location ended up with the most rain it's ever seen in one day whereas a cluster of towns in KZN now have a new lowest maximum temperature going one step further a couple of places have experienced their lowest ever recorded temperatures after the mercury drop across the central interior. A total of six lowest maximum temperatures were recorded across six separate locations in KZN, Itlopo, Pennington, South uh, Durban South, Athlone, King Shaka Airport, Mandini, Ntonzini, all broke long-standing records. Two lowest minimum temperatures were also logged. Makanda slipped to minus two degrees, whereas Orania dropped below minus five degrees Celsius. These are the coldest temperatures ever recorded in either location. Zanin Westphalia also recorded a rainfall and maximum temperature records, and Makador, Makador Dorp and Kruger Airport felt the chill of the cold front as each of their max temperatures plummeted this week. Let's bring it back with the temperatures for the rest of the country, starting off with Bologuane. It's a sunny day for Bologuane at a maximum of 24 degrees. Hazy sunshine in Bombela with a low of 13 and a maximum of 23. Pretoria, it's a partly cloudy day, 11.21. Partly cloudy in Johannesburg, 7.19. The sun is out in Mahigang at a maximum of 27 degrees. Glegsdorp, uh, your low for the day is 10 degrees but will reach an afternoon temperature of 28. It looks like the sun is out as well in Kimberley with a maximum of 20. 28 degrees. Bloemfontein, a partly cloudy one for you, 10 18. Richards Bay, 16 to 27. And Peter Maritzburg, 11 26. Moving over to Durban, South Africa's playground, a low of 14 starts your day, reaching a high of 24 degrees. It is a rainy day, MTAD, to 80% chance of rain and a low of 7 with a high of 26 degrees. East London, 14 22. Cradock, 3 26. The Friendly City, Port Elizabeth, 13 21. And the mother city, Cape Town, your low is 12 degrees with an afternoon temperature of 20 degrees. A partly cloudy day for you, Vusta, 11.23. Sutherland starts the morning on a chilly minus 5, reaching a high of 20 degrees. It looks like winter has made way for Uppington with a maximum of 28 degrees. We'll have another look at the weather report at the top of the hour. But for now, whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. Mm, we'll try to play our part in that little dynamic as much as we can. So much coming up on the show. I'm going to be starting the day with Nadia Nakai. She's got yeah. some exclusive news just for us as well, which is sounding great. We're going to be dealing with good posture. I know when, if you're going to be playing a lot of games or sitting, living the sedentary life, yes. your posture can become quite important. Grant knows all about that, so he's going to take us through some of those tips. And then we're getting pretty pumped about recycling. Oh, morning. man, so pumped, so conscious, something that I'm so passionate about, of course. Mm. And we're upskilling everybody at home, just with regards to being efficient, upcycling, and, of course, recycling at home. So we've got all that info coming at you so so soon so stay tuned for the magic <laughs> Oh, and just oh, one yes, more thing. Yes, just one sense. more thing. Gee. 500,000 likes on our Facebook yeah. page, which is a massive Man, milestone for us. It's, um, can we get a round of applause there? From, <laughs> I know everyone's so, so distant in our, our studio, but it's, it's incredible for us. This is a platform that we love to engage with you guys on. So thank you so much to each and every one of you who's given us one of those guys. We love you. Right back at you. Um, in fact, let us, let us know on Facebook how you're feeling about the show this morning. We'd love to hear from you. We'll see you in a month. Thank you. <laughs> 
this Saturday evening at 8 on SABC3. The Insider SA celebrates strong and enterprising women. We visit the beautiful home of an award-winning CEO who shares her perspective on job creation. See how a top designer modeled her own creations during lockdown and learn how an entrepreneur converts shipping containers into homes and offices. That's the Insider SA, Saturday night at 8, only on SABC3. Some gaming. It's time for some gaming action with our guru Gareth Woods, who brings us the latest in motorsport video game racing, Project Cars 3. Gareth Woods, good morning. Morning. How things inside? Ah, so, so good. Spring has sprung a little bit chilly still, but we're here and we're embracing the new season. Uh, but also, it seems that there's a new season in the form of this game. How does this racing game compare to other racing games that are currently out? Okay, well, first of all, racing games are normally split into either, what do you say, like arcade games, you know, the kind of things like Mario Kart that you'd be shooting rockets and doing whatever, um, and then more simulated. So games that are, are trying to be more like playing the real thing. What's interesting with Project Cars is it feels like, while it is definitely a sim and on the more realistic side, they've tried to make it far more accessible and, you know, dare I say fun, than some of the other simulators, which to be honest, as someone who's not a like motorhead and a big car guy, made it far more accessible for me. I mean, I, I reviewed a lot of car games, but I tend to enjoy them more when they're fun rather than they're super serious. So that, I find that they've done a really good job of kind of bridging that gap. You know, the thing about a racing game is it's all about how it feels and how it plays. So how does this one feel and play? First and foremost, it's uh, for, for real racing fans. So it's as realistic as they can be. When I say that things are a bit more arcadey, it's just the accessibility features. So the ability to make things um, more accessible to new players. Um, in terms of graphics and realism, wow, it, it really, really is top notch. Some of the most famous courses in the world that even someone like me who's a complete noob when it comes to motorsports can recognize some of the, the, the amazing graphics and the, and the, the cars and the uh, famous tracks from around the world. So in terms of how it plays and how it looks, uh, absolutely amazing, really have enjoyed it. And I'm playing on a standard PS4 controller. If you've got a proper force feedback kind of um, steering wheel, I'm sure the experience is even more realistic. Gareth, what most gaming enthusiasts are always, uh, you know, going crazy about is the things you can do with a game. So what can people do in this game? Sure. How much time do you have? That, uh, 
take your so time. There's so much you can do in the game. I've Lay it all out. Take <laughs> your time. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I didn't have a time to go into every single aspect of the game. What I really enjoyed is the career mode. So you can kind of start a career from scratch, you know, being a brand new driver and going through all the circuits and kind of level, leveling up your, your skills and your um, kind of abilities. Also, the training mode is amazing. So if a lot of the terminology is new to you, uh, slipstreaming and taking the right lines, if you want to learn that stuff, uh, there are a lot of training courses that allow you to kind of experience that. Because remember, different tracks, different weather conditions, different cars all run differently. And so learning that is an important part to then eventually taking your car and your skills online to play against other human players, which let's be honest, is where the real excitement is. And what's your verdict, Gareth Woods? What is your verdict on this game? Wow, as a non-car guy, I'm going to give this a solid 8 out of 10. Uh, if you're a car enthusiast, I don't know, maybe you're wanting something a little bit more serious, but if you're looking for something to, um, it's definitely improvement from the first two project cars and something that's maybe a little bit easier for newcomers to get into some racing, then potentially this is the game for you. Hmm. It's Project Cars 3. Gareth Woods, thank you so much for uh, making the time and giving us all of this information. I'm sure everybody out there is excited and eagerly going on the internet to go search all the information they need on this game. No problem. Thanks a lot for having me. <laughs> well, there you have it. Some laid-back car racing for those perhaps looking for a break from the hardcore sim racing. Uh, of course, thanks, Gareth, for your trusted review as always. Now, although lockdown restrictions have been lowered to level two, don't worry, our new normal still has a lot of people working from home. And while we may not all have those fancy office chairs, uh, it's pretty important to practice good body posture. And you know, I'm always looking after your body, looking after the soul. So making sure that your body posture is 100% correct will help you avoid back and neck pain and also add to your overall wellness. Now, one man that spends a lot of time in front of his computer is our friend and YouTuber, Grant Hines, who's making him the perfect person to give us some help tips this morning. Grant, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. You, know, <laughs> you have to spend a lot of time in front of the computer. I'm not uh, alone at this. You on Instagram, bro. Yeah, man. Freaking ripped. <laughs> I need to get as ripped as you. But I mean, we were forced to be here because we, yes. you know, we do uh, a lot of, you know, work around our computers. We live in a digital man. age. 100%. All of us yeah. are working from home. We've got to do this. Even so, the guys, like you said, on their phones, we literally, I see so many guys slouching over and hunching like we're going back to Notre Dame itself. And I think we all <laughs> need to get a little bit of a, a tip when it comes comes to allowing our posture to be correct. And also I find that it allows us to breathe properly and correctly, man. Yeah, you need to open up your chest to breathe. Yeah. And just being conscious of it really helps as well. Just being, a, just man. being yes. aware of it. So let's with the tips. What do you got for us, man? Okay, so the, so the first tip is actually pretty simple. Uh, and it seems super obvious, but it's not to slouch. So if mm. you're conscious of it, what I like to do is you put your shoulders back and you make sure that your shoulders and your pelvis are in, like they're parallel to one another. Okay. And if you can do this just a little bit every single day that helps a lot of people do this thing with their neck where they think that this is going to straighten out the thing oh, this right. does yeah, yeah it, do, it doesn't do it this doesn't help your back at all <laughs> get your back straight first and then the rest of your body kind of follows suit you know oh, just 100 percent aligns with what i've been speaking about when it comes to getting your core engaged as well and of course like we spoke about allowing for that full ability to breathe tip number one Busted. Okay, cool. Correct. So tip, next? <laughs> tip number two, and this helps a lot of gamers, but also a lot of people in the office. Yeah. We often have uh, notebooks like this yes. or something where we look down or our screens are down. Yes. Get your computer at eye level. That helps uh, your neck. Okay. So one of the ways to do that is just you can take a couple of books, whoops, okay. and uh, you can put the books down and so make you sure that you prop it up to your prop eye it level, up eh? to where you are at eye level as much as, as best you can. Don't worry about what your desk looks like. A lot of people go like, oh, but it looks messy. This helps if you've got a mouse and keyboard uh, that you, if you're using a computer a lot and you've got a mouse and keyboard attached to your computer, make sure that your uh, your hand, your wrist is parallel to your to your elbow okay. and that, that way you'll prevent carpal tunnel. Okay. As well, so that's sort of an added benefit. But if you are just doing a couple of things, make sure that your eyes are always looking straight. That is the most important thing. Hundred percent, man. I'm loving these tips, brother. Thank you so much. And I'm sure this is something I'm going to implement because I literally feel this like halfway in the day. The neck starts to strain a little bit. So. 100% bra, loving this one. What about our feet? I mean, we, we, we're sorting out the upper body over here, but lower down, is there anything that we can kind of sort out to make us uh, posture correct and 100% aligned? Yeah, so the, if you keep your feet on the ground as much as you can, a lot of, okay. I, I have really bad habits that you, I have to learn, like I like cross my legs on the chair yeah, or I yeah, yeah, sit yeah. like weirdly. Like the, the, if you keep your feet on the ground, it's easier to keep your back straight. Remember your lower back will then kind of follow suit oh, with yeah, your feet. Yeah, 100%, so, I'm actually feeling that. Literally, if right? I take my feet off the ground, have a little bit of hunch, as soon as I press down, 
I can almost assert myself and get a lot taller. I like that. And it's something you said earlier, it's easier to activate your core. Yes, When you've got your feet 100%. on the ground. When, when you've got your feet up here, you're, you're compensating with your lower back. Just you can, If you're sitting at home and you're doing this, lift your feet up when you're sitting on the couch and just feel your lower back. Try to carry the you rest of it. You are taking all the load 100% right, man. Yeah, but definitely. But if you've got your feet on the ground, then you, your core, is, your, your lower back is relieved and then and your core can, can get engaged. Yes. yes. Oh, gee, man. Loving all the tips coming through. Well, now you know to maintain a good posture in front of your computer, at your home, at your desk, wherever you may be, but I would like to squeeze in one last tip. Now, always remember to take a break every hour, stand up, stretch those legs, and take a sip of 100% refreshment. And of course, the goodness with Clover Fresh. Cheers, G. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Cadbury Dairy Milk Glass and a Half Project presents There's a Story in Everyone. Visit cadbury.co.za forward slash story time for more information on how to share your inspirational story. It's my feel good breakfast show. Happy birthday, a very happy birthday to you. Hey, 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 hey to the hey. Group. Yes, it's a Thursday, hey. and it's a special day, <laughs> and it's a birthday. That's why we are here to wish you, your, uh, our beautiful, loyal, and loved viewers, a very happy birthday. Uh, thank you very much for spending your mornings with us. And uh, if you are celebrating today, you share it with Brother Entanglement, <laughs> also known as August Alsina, who turns 28 <laughs> years old today. If you've never seen him, that's what he looks like. Is that his official name now? Mr. Entanglement. Brother, brother Entanglement. Brother Entanglement. But, but entangle, entanglement. But Entangler. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's an American singer-songwriter who was signed to Def Jam Rec Recordings. Over the years, uh, he has been battling with health struggles, unfortunately, and this year he released an album called uh, The Product 3, State of Emergency, along with a documentary series detailing his life experiences. He also made headlines for being in mm -hmm. an entanglement, quote-unquote, with Jada Pinkett Smith. Happy birthday to you, August, in September. I was about to say, <laughs> maybe the mother was way ahead of herself and she just committed to the name August. <laughs> Although she gave birth to him like, in September, she was like, mm, August. What are you trying to do? No, don't do that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Happy birthday to you, uh. August. Vinette, now the real celebrity is you at home. Happy 60th birthday to my mom, Vinette Smith. It's hard to take credit for any of the successes I have in life. As hard as I have worked to become the best I can be, you worked even harder hey, sure. to help me reach my dreams. Happy birthday, mom, from Rudy Smith. That was a beautiful, yeah, heartwarming bless our moms, message. Eh? Truly bless our moms. Happy 68th birthday to my mom, Mary. May the Lord bless you and may you have a super duper birthday. Love from your daughter, Wendy, and grandkids. Then, happy sixth birthday to our beloved, energetic, awesome grandson, Blaine Shaw. You truly are a blessing to Ma and Pa and the rest of the family. May God continue to bless and protect you. This is from Ma Rowena and Pa Kevi. There's Blaine. <laughs> and then uh, Nakane and Natandwa. I'm wishing my Nunu's Nakane and Natandwa a happy 
third birthday. Thank you guys for showing me the meaning of unconditional love. Love you lots. And this is from your mom. Oh, cutie patooties. A daughter as sweet and loving as you are is hard to come by. And I am so fortunate that I was blessed with a wonderful daughter like you. Your cake and present is coming your way. My sunshine, I love you. From your mom, Amanda. That is to Um Amila, who celebrates her birthday today. Oh, wow, beautiful. A special birthday to our firstborn, Josh Matthews. May you have a blessed future ahead of you. We love you lots from Mommy Nolene, Dad Delano, Jenna, and the rest of the family. Happy birthday to you, Josh. Then, uh, Rhiannon, happy birthday. Happy 12th birthday to you. Uh, this is for uh, birthday wishes to my rainbow baby, Rhiannon. Wishing you happiness and lots of love, always and forever. Hugs and kisses from your mom, Krista. And then to my darling Tyler Bums, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on your 13th birthday, uh, I thank God every day for blessing my life with a daughter as amazing as you are. Raising you has been such an amazing experience. You inspire me every single day. My wish for you today is that you continue to shine your light wherever you go. Continue to make good choices in life and stay the amazing child that you are. Happy birthday, my Tyler Bums. We love you. Beautiful <laughs> message. I mean, 13 yeah. is a big number. It I remember is. celebrating my 13th birthday. It was like... Yesterday. It was... Yeah, that one, that one, that one. Okay, to put things into perspective, it was like <laughs> 10 years ago, Kat, okay? <laughs> if you would like to wish your loved ones a happy birthday, do so by sending a birthday video to 071-640-6551 or email your wishes to birthdays at cardova.tv. Now, celebrating birthdays always makes our hearts smile and this mouth-watering recipe coming your way is sure to make your loved ones' hearts smile as well. And my stomach grumble because it's, it's a lot of hard work wishing happy birthday. Oh, it's true. <laughs> this is a reward we need, we deserve. <laughs> We can sort out that, that grumbling tummy, my friend. So things go well together, like a minion and a new there Anthony. Go. Perfect combination. Or maybe, perhaps, just maybe, chocolate and avocados. Maybe. What is this crazy person saying, man? Who would have thought? Um, undoubtedly, we know that chocolate and avocados are two of our staples, favorite things, certainly in our kitchen, yeah? And the world's gone crazy, so we might as well start putting but chocolate and avocado so together. It's so 2020, baby. <laughs> it's so 2020. So avocados, possibly, and chocolate, two of the most loved ingredients. Anchovies are going to be next, but that's another story. Oh, that's wait, 2021. Just, just we need a few more surprises <laughs> left to shock us in 2021, please, man. Um, so you might find these two kind of drifting in separate spaces of your kitchen. What you don't know is that you can combine them to create dense, oh, fudgy, chocolatey, delicious treats. And I'm saying it because I'm looking at them right now, combined with a goodness of locally sourced canola oil and much loved avocado. Shows that it's Ooh. a naughty sad in these delicious chocolate avocado brownies. It's on. What's going on? man and our private chef Neil Anthony is going to whip up a batch for us right super simple it's, now, it is super man. simple I won't lie it's, it's as simple as making like an avocado mash so we start off with this nice avocado mash obviously super ripe avocado is necessary mm. and even the nice thing about this is if it's like if there's a black spot or two don't if it's drifting onto that side of it it's, it's all drifting good, you know look it's not banana bread style I mean we're not going to go down that road okay. we don't want your avocados to be that black okay but sure. uh, you know a nice, a nice amount of a nice amount of avocado mush in there this is two avocados into that a couple of classic flavors. You got some uh, vanilla essence. Yeah. You got some nice runny golden syrup going in. This is going to give us that nice sort of real fudginess in the. Uh, um, in, in I've been the making like these uber healthy brownies throughout yeah. lockdown, and that's it's good. And it's no, it's not, man. It's boring, <laughs> and it's <laughs> it's the only it's okay, treat that yeah. I've been allowed. But when I see that syrup, that the, the yeah. globular, delicious flow of that syrup, it makes me oh. really happy because you want with a with a brownie. Let, let's be honest here, yeah, texture is, is almost yeah. as important as flavor. It yeah, needs to have time, that yeah. kind of like soft dense, but you want a bit of crust on the outside. Then our Be Well Canola Oil exactly is that. going and a, a tablespoon, a, a tablespoon in there, and then you're going to give this a nice mix up. You can obviously do this in a food processor, but you know, we're using the, uh, hand, you're using the guns running, today. You're using the guns. Uh, so there's one part of the recipe done, boom. Then and the other parts, of the, well, that's basically the wet ingredients. The wet, okay. Our dry ingredients, just some flour, some baking powder, some salt, some good quality cocoa goes in there as well. This is going to give us more sort of fudgy, chocolatey goodness. Boom, boom, boom. We can get rid of the whisk there, it's fine. All right. Um, so yeah, then just sort of, you, can, you don't need to sift this. You don't need to sift this. You can just... 
you know, so, you can uh, just you sort do, of fold Maybe through. make it vegan. Could you swap out any particular thing, maybe the eggs with some... Yeah, like egg with banana, banana basically. Banana. Yeah. Okay. So egg and banana, you can swap that out. You can also get an egg substitute as well these days in the market, which I is know, pretty You can good. pretty much get anything now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. The day that now, I, I ate cheese that wasn't cheese... Yeah, the day the they world. made uh, <laughs> coconut, the cheese out of coconut. Yeah, that's, the world has changed. <laughs> yeah. Now the world has changed, you better get on board. Yeah. Okay, so you so just see you gently fold folding that, that through, right through. Yeah, so fold that through. We don't want to mix this too much. We don't want to stretch the gluten in the flour because then we're going to get that stretchy feeling. We want that nice sort of crack style. Okay, feeling. cool. Not yeah. crack, crack, but crack. <laughs> Let, um, then we've got chocolate going in there, nice pick of chocolate chunks, and then we've got some uh, hazelnuts. Obviously, chocolate and hazelnut work really, really well together. Mm. You can go macadamia nuts, pine nuts, whatever, whatever nuts you're favorite. We're doing a nice sort of a, a sort of salted peanuts, quite nice as well. Okay, as well. Nice yeah, sort of salty, salty uh, bloody, bloody, blah. Good rock yeah. and roll. But yeah. what do you, what do you reckon? I know, like you can see what the avos are adding to the mixture. Yeah. It's going to add a creaminess. So what, what do you reckon the avo adds to this? Is it's just really a great just, combination. You know, it's it's also it just adds, like you said, I think creaminess. It it sort of it helps. To the fudginess, it uh, it gives it it gives it an amazing sort of creamy texture. Not much on flavour, but you know avocados don't have much flavour. Yeah. But it's really just it really sort of elevates the other ingredients in there. You know and what I mean? So it's slightly so, yeah. healthier. And this yeah, slightly healthier. Yeah, you know what you I mean? Can, you know that you're getting in, and of, yeah. of course with the addition of our Be Well canola oil, you're getting the cancer stamp of approval. Exactly. Um, more. An incredible high quality product that is completely sourced locally, which yeah. we love, man. So you can get your avos locally, you can get your canola oil locally. And these are things that make us smile. In fact, I've now, uh, getting to grips with the, the local Avocado Growers Association, oh, yeah. we've managed to extend our season. So we wow. get better and we export all over the world because our avos are so good. When I'm in Los Angeles, I buy South African avocados. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, but now they've, because South Africans love them so much, they've extended that, and which means we also get slightly cheaper avocados yeah. as well that stay in season long. Yeah, because the South African avocados are a superior quality. I mm. mean, you know, you, you can, you know, Mexico, Mexico and Spain are, are, are you know, well known for the growing, growing good avocados. But, you know, it's, there's something about a South African avocado. Can you make that, you know, that, that, exactly. that hula dance there? <laughs> there we go. So, so we yeah, now. just, uh, just align uh, just align your, your, your baking tin and then oven set for, uh, oven set at 180, you want to get a preset on that. Pop them in the oven. You can pop little marshmallows on there. You can, you know, you can, you can get funky with it, and then, you know, it comes comes out like that. It looks absolutely spectacular. So bake them, let them set a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. You can, of course, chuck them in a lunchbox, take them to work, take them to before the. You should, put, how uh, long should you wait before course. you you cut About them thirty-five into... seconds. <laughs> before you chuck in, before you, before before you, you chuck in with a spoon, thirty-five seconds. Least, before you cut it, a couple of minutes. <laughs> take it out of the oven first. Yeah, and at yeah. Least yeah do try get out the oven first. Uh, but you can find this recipe. On expressoshow.com, but let's take you through a blow by blow of how we arrive at these beautiful, fudgy, chocolatey, and avocado y brownies. <laughs>
You only have one skin. Nourish it and wear it bravely. It's my feel good breakfast show. Hey, welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Expresso on SABC3. Now, this morning, we're going to take a look at an award-winning business called Regenize, which is on a mission to make recycling more accessible, inclusive, and rewarding for communities. It provides a recycling service to households and rewards residents all at the same time. Let's see exactly how it all works with this. I'm Chad Robertson. I'm Kazim Lomiti. We are the co-founders of Reginize. Reginize is an inclusive, accessible and rewarding recycling service that provides recycling collections to citizens of Cape Town. So our model focuses on working with waste pickers. Uh, we provide them with tricycles, mobile devices and uniforms through integrating them into the model and then connecting them with the households that sign up for a recycling service. The issue, however, is that they are at the bottom of the food chain. They're getting the least for the, for the recyclables. They're collecting in the most horrible conditions. They're stretching through people's bins just to make a living. So we thought, why are they having to operate like that? How can we use our skill set and our technology to kind of introduce them into our way of doing things? Um, so they are working from 4 a.m. to uh, 4 p.m and it's us trying to catch them in between the times that they work and then trying to connect with them there. Um, it takes quite a bit of time over quite a few weeks. Also trying to supply them with uh, food, um, whether it's food packages or seeing, for example, how we can assist them in their daily collections. And then it's a matter of getting them on board, training them up, getting them known in the communities. Once they go and they knock at the door and ask for their recycling, go pick up their recycling, their name is known, the household welcomes, them they feel like they're part of something they don't feel rejected anymore they don't feel like they are pariahs of the community they feel like they are part of the community and that's what we try to bring that's the value we try to bring to them so the day before each collection happens we send out the reminder to you as a resident saying who will be here between an hour gap so let's say 12 and 1. Um, you put out your recyclables and on collection, the guys will get away the recyclables. After that, you then receive another notification stating how much you recycled, how much carbon emissions you reduce, and we also reward residents with our virtual currency called Rimali. So it allows you to buy vouchers, um, such as airtime, data, grocery vouchers, um, through our online platform. We're also working on a new model for an offline platform where people can get a QR code and they can connect with spaza shops and redeem the Rimali there as well. It involves the entire community. So it's not just households that are active in recycling, you have spaza shops as well that are benefiting from that so that's increasing the economic growth in the local community and yeah that's something that we, we are really passionate about just trying to close as many gaps as possible everyone call me Maza waves of the sea I'm a good swimmer <laughs> it makes me feel great because I wake up for a purpose I wake up in the morning for a reason by waking up every morning, I know that I'm going to work and uh, I'm going to clean. Helping clean the environment to be a better place for the kids to play in. There's no dirt around. Whereby when they're playing, they're playing on the cleaner environment. Actually, this keeps me fit. I wish I could write or compose some, you know, some things, but you know, here's my composition now. I'm composing here now. How to sort my uh, plastic, glass, I'm more like a conductor, conductor of garbage. Yeah, the community's really been supportive. It's, yeah, it's been a learning process for us, for them as well. It's the first time most of these people are recycling at their homes. And so, yeah, it's just been a great learning journey. They've been fully supportive. Um, and they really have a passion for making, for improving the community and a passion for supporting projects that helps uplift other people as well. It's a give and take for both sides, actually. We used to throw our bottles in the dirt bin. Yeah, they come along and like we're putting it now in bags and getting something out of it. It's a good thing, it's keeping our community clean and it's um, work for people that doesn't have work out there. So the guys are going to the households. Once they then get the recyclables, they will weigh the bags, capture the weights on the phones and then move on to the next households. Once their load is filled, they'll then go to our decentralized local hub 
Uh, Local Hub is basically a container that we set up strategically throughout the community. We have a few here in the community, this is one of them. So what happens now is the guys are basically going to be sorting these material by type and a truck will be coming by at the end of the day to load those up and take those through to the corresponding processing facility. So informal waste collectors are responsible for collecting up to 90% of all the paper and packaging waste we recycle as a country. And by that they save government up to 750 million rand a year through landfill airspace. The end goal is to get people to a stage of, you know, reducing as much as they can, living a zero waste lifestyle. And so right now the push is purely just to get as many households recycling in South Africa using our model. Um, but importantly doing it in an inclusive way where we're working with what's already existing in our country. Because we don't see ourselves as a recycling company. Yes, we're offering the service, but we're more about behavior change and making a sustainable behavior change focus on sustainable activities. That's what we're really about. Man, what an inspiring story to start your morning. In fact, Chad Robertson, the co-founder of Regionize, joins us this morning to tell us all about it. And, dude, you've done an incredible job. You and your partner have really opened up the industry, so to speak. Congratulations on what you've achieved so far. And I wanted to know, first of all, I mean, in terms of your conviction to want to do this, you, you were working in software before in, in the insurance business, and then you obviously saw a need yeah. um, kind of catapulted by the, the, the idea of what would happen if we don't intervene um, in, in, in changing recycling behavior? What did, you, what did you find? Yeah, well, at the time we started, um, we realized it was a scary stat that only 3.5% of South Africans recycle, which mm. made us think, you know, how do we help? It's a process. Um, combining that with the impacts of, you know, climate change, et cetera, we thought we need to intervene here and create a solution to get South Africans to recycle. Yeah. Um, and if you don't recycle, you know, there's a few, there's a lot of effects that come from that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the waste ends up in landfills and landfills are, losing space really. Um, there's some cities who's already transporting their waste to the city of Cape Town because the landfill closed. Wow. Um, and when that waste goes to landfill, it emits carbon emissions, um, methane gases, and that all contributes to climate change. Um, and climate change affects us all. You know, it affects weather patterns, affects the farmers, it affects our food prices. Mm -hmm. um, and just utilizing all our natural resources over and over again. Yeah. Um, so for the future generations and for ourselves currently, we thought we need to make this change and try and get Africans to recycle. And talk about making a change. You've made a huge change in the lives of the informal, or let's call them previously informal yeah, collectors yeah. that usually would be, let's say, hauling around a massive bag on a little made up trolley. And now yeah. you've given them the infrastructure to go forth and become their own entrepreneurs, if yeah. you will, their own providers of income. What, what impact have you seen uh -huh. in their lives? I think most importantly has been the dignity we've brought to their jobs. Um, their jobs previously was amazing. They've created so much impact in, in our country but they don't get the recognition or support to do that. So what we've done is we provided them with recycling tricycles, um, uniforms, mobile devices, and that assists them to collect more recyclables each day. Um, it also oh, connects man. them to the households where they collect from. And all of that together, you know, they get more money at the end of the day. Yeah, and a sense of pride as well. You know what I mean? When you, when you were looking at the, that gentleman and he was talking about, he wishes he could compose and write for a living. And now this is his composition. That is a yeah. sense of belonging and pride. Well done on that, really. Um, so what message do you want the public to take from all the work that you've done so far? Cool. I think that you know, a small change can really contribute to other people um, and to the environment, but importantly to future generations. So a small change like beginning to recycle can really impact you know, other people, but importantly the future generations because they're the ones that are going to suffer from all the actions we take today. Um, and so if the communities could make a small change and starting to separate the recyclables, yeah. you know, put it out, even if they don't have access to a recycling service, chances are very high that there are recycling collectors in the community, whether it be informal. And just by them separating it before it goes into the black bin, you know, you're assisting a life, you're making their lives easier, and they're getting cleaner recyclables, and so their jobs become safer. Um, and if you do have op um, access to recycling services, you know, sign up for it, it's very simple. With yeah. us, it's free. Yeah, man, that's amazing. There's a, an incredibly good energy that I'm getting from you with regards to this. It just kind of seems to, to shine through, and it's not because of like the green uniform that you're wearing <laughs> right now. But how, how can we get the, the rest of the country involved? Because I think this should 
be a nationwide thing and perhaps yeah. one day maybe even a continent-wide thing. Yeah, 100%. So if residents like to join up for our service, um, they can simply go to our website, mm -hmm. um, which is www.regionize.co.za, add their address in the address bar, and then sign up from there. If we're not in the area yet, we will take them to, a, to an interest page where we could show them how far we are from coming into the area. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we also have options like USSD where they can sign up, so there's really no excuses to not sign up for recycling. Yeah. Chad, to you and your business partner, well done. Thank you so uh, much. Thank all you the best us. for the future. Thank you so much. Well, I hope that that has inspired you. Truly great work uh, being done through Regionize, and we all need to work together on this. I mean, let's, let's help this become a nationwide phenomenon that can ultimately change the lives of so many people. Cadbury Dairy Milk Glass and a Half Project presents There's a Story in Everyone. Visit cadbury.co.za forward slash story time for more information on how to share your inspirational story. It's my feel good work this show Still locked in. It's a feel-good breakfast show, and of course, we are making so much magic, producing so much magic. And right now, we're going to get you all to live and have some magic. Of course, now recycling has seen a surge of exciting new technologies that are helping improve the environment. And Grant is joining us to talk through some of these exciting developments. My man, we've got some cool stuff when it comes to recycling. Of course, we're talking about the different ways, the different technologies re relating to it. And uh, starting off with just, I guess, sorting. Like from the beginning, when it comes to breaking down the cardboard, the plastic, and everything else. What tech is involved in sorting? But first, before we kick this off, okay. actually one of the things that I'd like to mention and break down is All that right. we are given stuff to recycle from companies and brands yes. that uh, actually we shouldn't be responsible for recycling and stuff. Those aren't solutions that we need to do. The solutions come when you leave school and you get into the work environment and you work for these companies to provide better products that we can yes. use. So that creates a greener future. But for now, we have a lot of plastic lying around. We've got to fix it. Yes, we do, unfortunately. So what, what, what do you have for us? Where do we go with this? So one of the, the first ways to do that is AI sorting. AI is improving all the time. Right. And usually sorting is done by hand. So if you put 
different kinds of plastics. Uh, some plastics can't be recycled. You yes. might think they're recycled, but they can't. And it goes through a conveyor belt at a recycling depot. And AI sorting allows robots to then manually sort through different materials that people would usually have to do. But potentially even better than when people did and faster, which means that the end product when, when you recycle the plastic is even better. And then when we use, uh, you know, like landfill material, we can even potentially sort, sort through landfill material oh, wow. to pull out recycled plastics That's that can be used. definitely something I've seen a lot, Grant, especially when it comes to sorting. I remember being back at school back in the day and we literally used to have all the kids sorting out, like I said, the cardboard, the plastic, and you get these different types of plastic now, which you said some are recyclable and some actually are not. How do we as the consumer know that and we we put with all these issues of how do we figure this out so I think AI definitely will help us here so that is something brilliant something I'm really looking forward to so sorting's uh, uh, kind of box has been ticked Something called munching? You heard about that at all? You know much about it? Oh, yes. It? Yeah, so, yeah. so plastic, uh, contrary to a lot of popular belief, and we're, we're genetically engineering some forms of bacteria to uh, eat plastic. Because mm. plastic, when, when things uh, like decompose and like are biodegradable, it's bacteria that's using that material as food yes. and like basically excreting it into the environment and being voila that product disappears okay. essentially that's why paper slowly disappears when you leave it outside yes, you know yes, it yes, decomposes yes, yes. bacteria is using it as food so we've started to create some bacteria and 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 genetically modify some bacteria to actually eat some of the plastics that we that's have crazy. created which is a really lateral solution because a lot of the, the original plastics weren't biodegradable by anything natural in yes. the environment or take a long time so we can speed up that process by genetically engineering and modifying different bacteria okay, to do that. I got that. you. So I've heard, obviously, and I've seen, obviously, with the environment, especially when it goes to the ocean, a lot of these polymers and plastics don't break down enough, and there's these little tiny molecules that are, like, hanging and just being submersed within what's supposed to be a playground of love, food, and magic for yeah. the animals. And we can't see it with our eyes, see it, but those yeah. microplastics are there. Okay. So what does that mean in the next five years? I should be watching out for, like, big plastic-eating uh, monsters, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> look, look I'm, I'm all down for solutions. Don't be scared by phrases like genetically modified, I really am stressed because a lot of people go like, oh no, GM is scary. Yeah. It's not. Like, the carrots that we eat are GM as well. Like I think every nothing scarier than the current world we're living in as well, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, <laughs> we, we've got to solve these problems. We created yeah, them, man. we've got to fix them. So Grant, something a bit more, uh, I'd say, uh, many people might not be aware of, something called depolymerization. Yeah, depolymerization. Yeah, yeah, what is that about? So, like, a lot of people don't know that plastic is actually made from petroleum. Mm. It comes from petrol. And because of that, like, if we can reverse the process a little bit, we could potentially get more product out of it. Okay. Petrol is an energy source, right? Yes. So uh, when you make uh, plastic, you usually turn petrol into a, a product called plaques. And with the plaques and with um, plastic pebbles, you can then melt those into all the plastic products that we have today that okay. you can see. All right. So if we can, re we, with, with a process called depolymerization, you can break down that plastic into those, those uh, plaques, uh, pebbles, and then create new products. And the exciting thing is that we could probably do some better, they're better quality products the second time round okay. in some instances, which is really so cool. So you're almost not only recycling, but you're actually upgrading at the same Potentially, time. Potentially, yeah. Sounds like it. And now, I know we'd always mulch when it comes to mixing things and creating these fusions, but we're talking micro emulsion when it comes to recycling. What on earth is that? Well, micro emulsion is, is, is interesting because it solves a, a problem. It's like, it's a chemical that we put down and we can, you know, you can like, kind of like an acid, it's not really an acid, but it's a chemical that will eat away different materials. A lot of the materials we have, like uh, there are boxes, you know, like if you get a milk carton, it's got, it's got cardboard on the yes, outside yes, yes. and it's got like yeah. tin foil on the inside. Yes, yes, yes. Like it's hard to recycle some of those products. Yeah, you've got to tear them apart and you've break them apart for the different them. pieces. Yeah. And it's not quality. So this, uh, by, by emulsifying some of those products, you can separate those chemicals apart or those, those components apart from the, from the products by throwing them into uh, what, what I imagine to be a vat. I'm actually not 100% sure how that yeah. works. But, and I'm sure there are recycling uh, experts out there who know better than this, but it, it will help us to recycle complex materials that are made because a, a, a material is not ne necessarily a singular material yes it's made of many different things yes. put together oh man grant you are schooling me and educating me and i'm loving this so much and i think everybody out there needs to pay attention we're definitely going to be continuing this conversation with grant of course we're heading over to facebook live after the so after the show so join us there as we get more involved in all the tech and all the incredible options that we have when it comes to recycling grant thank you so much my man i have been educated like i cannot imagine and i'm hoping we can continue this conversation well
let's kick off with the rest of the show now. We're heading off to Tubbs and see what's happening in the news. <laughs> Thank you very much, Grant. Thank you very much, Ryle. Time for us to take a look at the 7 o'clock news headlines. We start off locally here in South Africa, where Auditor General Kimi Makwetu yesterday said it had been established that more than 30,000 people who were not eligible to receive the 350 Rand Special Unemployment Grant were paid by the South African Social Security Agency, SASA. This emerged in an audit report on COVID-19 relief funds compiled by the Office of the Auditor General. The audit also uncovered a lack of coordination amongst government departments and the use of companies without valid tax clearance certificates to supply PPEs. Makwetu said that their audit also found the gaps in the SASA system. The black eagle chick that hatched at the Walter Sisulu Botanical Gardens in Gauteng in June and on which we reported at the time spread its wings and took to the skies for the very first time on Monday. The young raptor is the first born to Makatsa and Mathori. Mam Makatsa has lived in the gardens since 2016 with dead Mathori uh, making the gardens his home on the 13th of July of last year. The public and wildlife enthusiasts have been invited to suggest a name for the chick by email and stand a chance of winning some prizes. The closing date is tomorrow, so do go and check that out. In international news, the FBI and the Federal Aviation Administration are investigating reports that a guy in a jetpack was seen by pilots flying near Los Angeles at the LAX airport close to where planes were landing. The incident, which was recorded by air traffic control has happened on Sunday evening and was witnessed by two pilots, two separate planes. The apparent culprit was seen flying at an elevation of 915 meters. And jetpacks, obviously, once the realm of science fiction, have become a thing of reality, experts say. Five baby gorillas have been born to different families in six weeks in Buindi, in the National Park of Buindi, leading the Ugandan Wildlife Service to declare a baby boom. Seven babies have now been born since January, compared to three in the whole of 2019. Mountain gorillas are endangered with just over a thousand of them in existence. Park officials said that this year was unprecedented for gorilla births, but it is not clear why there has been this uptick. This as parks are attempting to establish whether visits to primate locations which were stopped due to the coronavirus had anything to do with this. And now more about the world's oldest married couple, Julio Mora, 110 years old, and Valdemina Quinteros, 100 and four years old of Quito, capital of Ecuador, have secured the title of the oldest married couple. According to Guinness World Records, Julio slipped away from his parents' home to secretly marry Valdramina Quinteros one February day. Both families disapproved. 79 years later, they're still together. He at 110 years old, uh, of age and she at 104, both in good health. There are longer marriages, but at the moment, no other between people so old, according to Guinness World World records. Mora was born on the 10th of March 1910 and Quinteros uh, uh, on October the 16th 1915. They wed on February the 7th 1941 and the two retired teachers received their Guinness certification last month. Their daughter Cecilia says that they're both lucid and active although no longer have the agility they had before. But for a month they have been different, uh, more downcast because they miss large family gatherings due to the COVID-19 pandemic and they sure can gather quite, uh, uh, gather rather a quite uh, a crowd. Four surviving children, 11 grandchildren, 21 great grandchildren, and one great, great grandchild. Oh, what a story. That's where we leave it for now. Here's a look at what's happening in sports. So far less romantic as we start our sporting headlines and we are in for a dramatic final stanza in the PSL season, our shortened season of course. Kaiser Chiefs, Mamelodi Sundowns, they remain level on points after the penultimate round of fixtures in the Premier Soccer League last night. So the Amakosi beat Chipper United 1-0 at the Orlando Stadium, while the Brazilians, they thrashed Polokwane City 3-0 at Loftus Fairsfeld. That means the teams are now still level on 53 points, but Chiefs remaining just out in front on top of the standings on goal to Difference. The 2019-2020 PSL season will go down to the wire on Saturday when Chiefs face Baraka FC and Sundowns take on Black Leopards at 3.30. Will there be an upset? We'll have to wait and see. Then on to tennis. Unfortunately, not the be best news as South Africa's Lloyd Harris unfortunately crashed out of the US Open after losing 7-6, 4-6, 6-1, 6-4 to seventh seed David Goffin of Belgium in the men's singles title race in New York. In the men's doubles tournament, seventh seed South African 
Raven Klaassen and his Austrian partner Oliver Marach. They fell to a surprise 6-3-7-6 first round defeat that at the hands of Philip Oswald and Marcus Daniel. Then staying with tennis but now turning to the women's singles title, 23-time Grand Slam winner Serena Williams beat fellow American Christiane 7-5-6-3 to advance to the US Open second round. 38-year-old is, uh, she won in an hour and a half and now continues to chase that record equalizing 24th Grand Slam title. She'll face Russian Margarita Gasparian in round two. Serena's older sister Venus crashed out of the tournament after losing 3-6-5-7 to the Czech 20th seed Karolina Muchova. That's where we leave our sport for now. Let's take another look at the weather. We kick off the second look at the weather report in Jersey with Ndogozo Makatini's sunrise picture. It looks like spring has sprung for you. A mostly cloudy day though coming your way. Ndogozo with a low of 7 degrees and a high of 19 degrees. Let's get over to Grobelsdal in Limpopo with Matunyane's sharp sunrise picture. Clear skies for you today with a maximum temperature of 26 degrees. Thank you so much for your sunrise pictures. Please continue sharing them on our social media platforms and we will show them live on the show. Now, in total, an unprecedented 15 weather records in the country have fallen since the weekend. One location ended up with the most rain it has ever seen in one day, whereas a cluster of towns in KZN now have a new lowest maximum temperature. Going one step further, a couple of places have experienced their lowest ever recorded temperatures after the mercury dropped across the central interior. A total of six lowest maximum temperatures were recorded across six separate locations in KZN, Itlopo, Pennington, South uh, Durban South, Athlone, King Shaka Airport, Mandini and Tunzini all broke long-standing records. Two lowest minimum temperatures were also logged. Makanda slipped to minus 2 degrees, whereas Orania dropped below minus 5 degrees Celsius. These are the coldest temperatures ever recorded in either location. Zanin um, Westphalia also recorded new rainfall and maximum temperature records and Makadodorp uh, and Kruger Airport felt the chill of the cold front as each of these uh, maximum temperatures plummeted this week. At Bologuan, it's a sunny day for you at a maximum of 24 degrees. Hazy sunshine from Bombela at a low of 13, reaching a high of 23. Pretoria, your temperatures for the day range from 11 to 21 degrees Celsius. Partly cloudy in Johannesburg at a low of 7, with an afternoon temperature of 19. The sun is out in Mahikeng at a maximum of 27. Clegstar, partly cloudy, 1028. Kimberley, 1128. Bloemfontein, also a mostly cloudy day at a low of 10 and a high of 18. Rutgers Bay, 1627. Pete Maritzburg, 1126. Sturban, South Africa's playground, 14 starts off your morning, reaching an afternoon temperature of 24. It's going to be a rainy day in Tata with 80% chance of rain. East London, 1422. Cradock, 326. And Port Elizabeth, the friendly city, 1321. George, your temperatures range from 11 to 21 degrees. Cape Town, your low is 12 degrees and your high is 20. Vusta, partly cloudy day at a low of 11 degrees and a high of 23. Sutherland starts off the morning on a chilly minus 5, reaching a high of 20 and it looks like winter has made way for summer in Uppington with the maximum temperature of 28 degrees. That was the final look at the weather for the day. Now remember, whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. You know what I reckon will improve your day? What's that? A little bit of money. Always. Hey, I'm not going to mince my Always. words. It's time <laughs> to win some money, y'all. And it could not get any easier. Of course, courtesy of Nedbank, we've got an impressive 40,000 rand up for grabs. And we're looking for a lucky winner or a few winners that can each win their share of that epic prize. Absolutely. So to enter, all you have to do is to spend a minimum of 500 rand on your Nedbank check or credit card. Now, once you've spent that 500 rand or more, simply SMS the keyword Nedbank to 3. 3728 and if you're selected as a winner you could win two and a half thousand rand nice yeah nice that's man. enough money to make me smile on a come on random man. day just like we'll call it some lockdown petty cash but <laughs> um, even better if you're not a nedbank client and you open a brand new account with nedbank they will double your prize money to five thousand rand so go and open a nedbank check or credit card account on the nedbank website spend at least 500 rand or more to qualify then just as we said sms the keyword nedbank to double three seven two eight to register your entry it really is that simple it's going to cost you just a buck fifty unfortunately no free sms's apply yeah 
the competition runs until the 18th of October, so there's more than enough time. Uh, but we will do our first draw next Monday on the 7th of September. So get in on it as soon as possible, and you could be winning some serious cash. And like we said, this competition is just for our Expresso viewers. So your chances of winning are really, mm. really high. So for all those terms and conditions that apply to the competition, you can visit our website, expressoshow.com. Get entering. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. So I'm chatting to Umalume Mosa here. He's owned a small clothing factory for years now, and he's always inspired me with his success. But like a lot of businesses, this lockdown's hit him hard. So he spoke to his banker, and they've put together a tailor-made relief solution for him to help his business and his people get through this. Making your bank your business partner? That's a habit worth keeping. What's better than a sugar-coated, deliciously crispy golden brown donut and 100% Arabica beans brewed to perfection? Treat yourself and warm up your morning with a little sweetness from Mac Cafe with the all-new mini donut and cappuccino offer. A little leaven doesn't have to cost a lot. Great coffee, simple. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to it, you gorgeous people. Yes, it is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express live on SABC3 on this beautiful Thursday morning. Now, you know that throughout this week, we've been connecting with uh, some of Mzansi's biggest stars. Jamie Lee's been bringing us all the action from their houses. And this morning, we get to wake up with Nadia Nakai, the hit maker. Take it away, Jamie Lee. Thank you, Tabi. So very good morning to you, South Africa. Listen, word on the street is that Nadi Nakai is about to drop a deluxe album tonight, midnight. We are having an exclusive sit-down with her this morning. Morning, Mama. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. I mean, this is very early for you, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm normally waking up at like 12. 12 in <laughs> the afternoon. Because I sleep like at 5 a.m. Like my body, even though we're not performing, it's like my body clock is still like sleeping very late. Crazy, so, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, we all have to adjust to the new normal of now having to just fit our schedule in. But let me start off by saying congratulations on your Thank brand new place. You. We obviously wanted to wake up with you in your place, but it's under construction. You bought your <laughs> brand new home. How does it feel to, you know, build an empire like that? Um, well, to be honest, I just needed a place to settle. I felt like I was moving around a lot, but it's good to find a place where I can just, like, make it my sanctuary. And I was like, ah, energies, energies. <laughs> 
I want to take you back to the uh, place, you know, where you had to sell your phone to oh. just get studio time and yeah. now to be in a place where you, you, you know, you're comfortable and you're at a place, again, building your empire. I mean, that must be so empowering for you. Um, well, it's, it's, it's like, it's humbling because I know, I'll never forget that I had to do that. I had to mm. sell my phone for studio time. I remember studio time was like 200 rand an hour and I needed like two hours because I needed my song to play on radio. And the fact that now, I mean, there's different challenges now. There's still things that I have to like figure out how to maneuver. But starting out like that will always humble me to know that I started out on my own. No, no matter what, um, no matter who came into my life to like support at the beginning, this, this whole dream started out with me wanting to do it from the beginning. I'm literally getting goosebumps right <laughs> now because you you had that humble beginnings and now one million views, the first South African hip hop artist to ever do that. I mean, that must also just be so big for you, but still you remain humble. I mean, what is that experience knowing that like people are just so accommodating and they they listening to, to what you have to put out there? I think honestly, it is, it's amazing for me to have reached a million views. Um, I don't think it's a thing of of stopping if you know what I mean I want to be able to reach 200 million views I mean and I feel like this is just the beginning but I have bigger aspects I have bigger aspirations for myself and it's like yes fantastic we got that but I'm not holding on to that let's move on and see if I can get another one that reaches a million views and over that's always been like my mantra to always kind of like better myself you better know? yourself yeah maybe. and talk about the collaboration with Cass Nieves again the f first female artist to be featured on the album any minute now no I'm not the first female artist no you not okay. No, what do you okay. mean? Okay. Listening this whole discography? No, but for the for the no, no, no. He's got. He's actually he's posted his his um, track list. So Busiso is on it as well. So it's not it's not just me. But it's exciting because I've always had to fight to be on his album. I've always <laughs> yeah. been like when I get there, I'm like, okay, this is the song I'm getting on. Send me the beat, Ali. I'm going to record it. And then this one was the first one. He was like, listen, I actually found a song that's dope for you. I didn't think I I, I would fit because the way he is right now is, but I have a baby. He's very mature. He's kind of like an old soul. And me, I'm the bad bad. I just don't yeah. have and parties and stuff but this was the perfect song I'm really excited yeah I'm we excited I'm sure it's gonna probably hit 200 million views at, at that point I'm sure <laughs> just putting it out there uh, but of course like obviously everyone's going through you know the lockdown COVID-19 has affected so many artists how has you know this entire pandemic affected you and how you've had to just change your mindset and yeah. the way of living well, to be honest, like it's heartbreaking not, not being able to perform because that's like literally my happy place. But the one thing that was really dope about the lockdown, especially at the beginning, now it's gotten a bit like, <laughs> okay, let's, you know. But at the beginning, I, I was really upskilling myself. So things that I normally would have a team for, like someone that shoots my videos and edits, I taught myself how to do that now. I got myself a really dope camera. I was recording myself cooking or working out or just talking smack and just posting videos on YouTube. And that was kind of exciting for me because normally I wouldn't have the time for it. And secondly, I didn't have the skill for it and I think a lot of people during lockdown were really upskilling themselves things wow. that they wanted to do I mean I taught myself how to install wigs and how to do my makeup properly okay. and that was that was something I never would have done before you know which is quite cool I like that. Um, I'm definitely coming for like a whole... No, please don't ask me to do your face. No, like, I can't so, do anyone else's but mine. Okay, so maybe she, you should just do the tutorials and we'll uh, learn from there. Yeah. But of course, I'm sure that we obviously just came out of Women's Month and so many women and just like people in general look up to you. Uh, what message of hope do you have for other artists out there that is like, listen, if not in a car, I can do it. Yeah. I can do it too. Honestly, the main thing would be that there's space for us. Um, you don't need to compromise your values to get in... in any situation to get your song playlisted, to get your music video on TV, to get attention. Right now, women are being heard. Might be not be at the, the capacity of our male counterparts, but there's an opportunity for us to really do it on our work ethic. And the biggest thing that you need to do is just to really work hard. Work on your music, work on your craft, make sure that you're meeting the right people, networking. You can really do it based on authenticity alone. Hmm. And of course, your brand new, this is why we're here, mm. your brand new deluxe album yes. drops tonight, 12 o'clock. We have an exclusive, everybody. Yay. What can we expect? So there's, um, I don't know if I want to say too much, but there's a, there's a I don't yes. know. I mean, okay, yeah, so um, it's Nadia Naked 2, so the, the songs from the original are still there, it's just an extended version, so I've added four new songs, two hip-hop songs and two Afro um, dance hall sexy vibes, yeah. which I'm really excited about, and there's an international feature on one of them, as well as an amazing local feature, which is great. Can you tell us who the international feature is, maybe? Ah! maybe like that? I mean, come on, it's, we, we, we're counting down the hours or we just have to wait and see till tonight. You're going to have to wait and see till tonight. <laughs> well, listen, we are here for it. Yes. Of course, we're still going to be sending the morning with Nadine Akai. And 
Listen, everybody thought you were not spending a lockdown uh, with somebody. You actually were spending with someone very special. And we're going to meet the love of a life, hopefully, uh, in a little bit. So you want to keep it locked right and you feel good breakfast show. Nadia. Nadia and Akai, what's your favorite song? It's that Namin song. Pull, Pull up, up in the four door, Avi. Avi. I love her so much. She's giving us life. That hair girl takes me back to Lebo Matosa days. Yes, Tembi it's like the big. It's like, about yeah. time. To listen to Boom Shaka. <laughs> it's all about Throwback <laughs> Thursday today, but also let's yes. get in focus yes. because we're talking about all things makeup. Must have made winter all about the eyes. But that doesn't mean that we should forget about the rest of our face and the rest of our features. It's springtime, well, theoretically, because <laughs> you wear the outside, it will win damdase. But here to give us an inside scoop on the latest in makeup is our very own fashion beauty editor, Nakolo Knox Ma. Good. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. That's it. Yes. Ma'am. We're talking spring trends yes. right yes. now. What kind of trends should be, uh, which should be, your know, English. Expected, should I we think. look Expect forward, forward to for spring? Okay. So <laughs> the things we should look forward to this spring <laughs> is, I think, a bold eye. So I think mm. the bold eye is definitely the focus. I mean, you even sporting it today. Definitely, you're focusing on the lip. Um, so it's about choosing those focal points and really, really playing with spring pop colors. Mm. Um, you know, you can really experiment with colors. I think we're not taking ourselves so seriously mm -hmm. anymore. So even with the eyeshadow palettes, you're really are playing with beautiful colors you can do like a smoky eye like you've done today yes but also like a bold lip it really just says a lot you know mm. i'm someone for instance who likes to do it quite natural mm. but my lips usually are the focal point so it's about choosing one um unless you're going full glam where you could do both but those are the kind of things you're going to start to see and i love how we kind of exchanged our faces yeah. or our looks today because i have a bold eye mm. but a very nude lip mm. and you came in strong with the lip color but yeah. with a very light more natural eye look Yes. What products should we be looking forward to okay. um, in spring? So if we're focusing on, let's say, the eye, mm -hmm. I mean the lips. Let's yes. just talk about the lips for now. There's some beautiful lip um, sticks that are here. So this is the Hydro Lipstick, mm -hmm. um, which is a really, really, like, beautifully packaged. I love the color here. I mean, this Ooh. is, and actually this pink is all the rage right now. If you notice, mm. you know, your limes and stuff, but definitely the pink is definitely the season. So a lovely way to make those lips pop. And then, of course, we've got you know even more with the hydro the classic more mm. red color which just is a classic finish yes. to any outfit i like really the way that it just goes quite easily you know it's an easy application if we were to swatch it here mm. so it is a far more glossy kind of finish which is great um you know, what I tend to enjoy to do um, in, in like summer months or spring months mm -hmm. is really focus on more dewy looks. So yes. sometimes you can go for more matte, but I think mm. sometimes a more glossy lip mm. is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I like to finish it off with the ultimate color gloss, which is absolutely incredible. We're looking at the color Divine Wine right can you now. you please watch it? Of because course. I want to see the texture of this gloss. So this is a beautiful, oh, just the way... And just I look mean, at that. It's so generous with product. I mean, if we mm. look closely here, there's a lot already. So I think it, it can last quite long. And when we swatch it over here, Gutle, look at that. I mean, that gloss. That is a gorgeous color. That gloss, that finish. Um, mm. If you wanted to mix, I'm all about mixing colors, creating yeah. colors for yourself. So don't be afraid to experiment. You know, you could mix these two colors and get a new, a new color. So really, really a great product to have super super affordable but of course if you want to just add some accent mm. to those brows um we've spoken about this wonderful wizard here which is the w beauty eyebrow two-in-one styler what i love about this is that you can start off with sorting out mm. the brushing of the brows and then is that a gel at the end a it's gel, a gel one so well. if you hear this like a mm. sound <laughs> there's, there's a gel in here and then of course you would fill in with something mm. like this so this is really really a great tool that you can just have in your bag to keep mm -hmm. it handy Oopsie. and not throw Don't everything run away because i actually really like the color and what i love most about the lipsticks that you just showed me is the buildability of yeah. them so if you want like a kind of sheer coverage yes. it's fine one application should Absolutely. be enough but if you want to build on it it can become like that strong bold 
gold color. lip. Absolutely, good. And I mean, if you want to focus on the eyes now, mm -hmm. we've got an incredible, you know, eyeshadow here. These are kind of low, the small individual colors mm -hmm. that you can have. So if you find that you use one color yeah. a lot more, it's a great one to have. But this palette over here is just Ooh. so exciting. It is the eye and cheek palette, which is just so incredible. Let me just open it for you. That and over gorgeous. here, I mean, it's stunning. I think it's highly pigmented with some of them. Mm -hmm. So we've got that glossy finish. Um, we've also then got your more standard kind of cheek um, mm -hmm. items. And what I love about this is that you can use it between day and night. You know what I mean? So you could start off the day um, over here with a more light finish. If you're going out to dinner, you quickly whip it out and then you start to go in with your darker features. So really, really a lovely palette mm. to have from day to night and really, really great for the woman on the move. Um, and of course, because our masks are probably still on. Yes. You need to keep Always them. wear a mask. Always please. wear a mask. Just, just remember, <laughs> always wear a mask. But of course, the king setting spray lovely way to just finish off all those mm. looks to also make sure that your skin is hydrated mm -hmm. during this time and that there's a little transfer of makeup onto your mask so all these little tidbits are great to have in your bag and make sure that you're looking and feeling great absolutely love everything you just put me on when i knock and it's very important that we use that setting spray because nothing is more worse than transferring makeup to you know your yes. your, your face yeah, mask exactly and it's also just nice to put all the things together Together. I find like when I put my makeup on, it can look quite jarring as yeah. if things haven't kind of gelled together. And just a little bit of a spray really just helps it set. That's what's called <laughs> setting spray. But it really just allows the skin to also lean into its own hydration. Mm -hmm. And then you've got that glowy mm -hmm. summertime look. Absolutely love every single thing about W Beauty. Thank you so much, Knox, for always Thanks. coming through and putting us on with everything that we need to know when it comes to beauty and fashion. Now, you at home nourish your skin 24-7 with this exclusive offer. W Rewards members get 20% off on day and night creams plus an extra 5% off when you pay with your Woolies card. This offer is valid until the 6th of September 2020. When's the 6th? On Friday, just Saturday, run. just now. So you can shop all of these at Woolworths in store online or on the Willys app. So keep it locked right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show because the feel goodness continues after this. Welcome back. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on SABC3. Now it is officially Heritage Month. And of course, no self-respecting Mzanzi Bri is complete without a salad. All three. And no salad is complete without loads of homegrown goodness. And we mean South African avos, of course. And today, our friend Chef uh, Neil Anthony is showing us how to create the ultimate heritage Bri salad chock full of delicious South African produce. A now, Bri salad, yeah. yeah exactly. exactly. A, 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 a Bri salad. <laughs> a Bri, a bri sure. and a sly. Right. Now, when, when it comes to salads, um, I mean... Avos more specifically. I think there's Definitely, a lot of confusion. Yeah. A lot of people don't know the difference between uh, what is a haas, uh, what is fuerte, is it a bunny, is it a haas yeah. bunny, or is it a, a fuerte, and that kind of thing. Rappers so, and avocado go quite well together, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, if you are confused, uh, do take a look at uh, what uh, one of our Mzanti stars, La Cizwe, had to say about it, just as a simple explanation for you. Avocado customer hairline, how can I help you? Hi, you're speaking to Catherine. I'm at the shops right now and I don't know which avocado is which. Okay, ma'am, are you on the shop? I'm in the shop, not on the shop. In, on the shop, same WhatsApp group, ma'am. You want help with the avocado or not? I'd really love help. Please help okay, me. Okay, what avocado are you holding with your hands? I'm holding the dark green one. The dark green one? 
Ma'am, does it have like a, a hard skin? It looks like my ex-husband's face. Yes. Look, yes. Ma'am, sh- sorry, um, hello? It's the hurt avocado, don't, don't, right? Don't, don't, don't touch things that you can't pronounce. It's called a hass. H-A-S-S. Not a hass. Not a hiss. A hass. But this dark color, it looks rotten. Yes, ma'am. This one, it looks dark color, but maybe it's ripe. Uh-huh. It's just it's a darker color, it's a different make. Okay. This one, ma'am, when it becomes ripe, it becomes even a purplish color. It's still eatable, but it's just that it's a color. Let me squeeze to see if it's yeah, ready. Don't squeeze the avocados because if you press them, you're going to leave them and the other children must buy it. Which other avocados are there? Okay, ma'am, there's another avocado. It's called the Fute avocado, not a Fute. Fute? Fute? Yes. Okay, which one is this one? Yeah, it's the green one. Yes, but can you see it? Yes, I can see it. Yes, so the green one, ma'am, that one is a handle with K avocado, okay? So I'm just going to press and squeeze a bit just to see if it's right. Ma'am, do you want me to clap you over the phone? You can't be squeezing these avocados, ma'am. I mean, everyone squeezes no, avocados. No, you're giving them bruises. Especially the Fute. The Fute Excuse is very me, sexy. are you shouting at me? Who is buying these avocados? Hello, ma'am? Me or ma'am? you? Hello? I can hear you, ma'am. This avocado, it's got a soft skin. So you handle with care and how you see that it's ripe. You just hold on the palm of your hands and you'll see it's just gonna levitate. What do you mean levitate? Yes, I said levitate. It, you can feel it that it's ripe and the packaging is written ripe and ready to eat. So, ma'am, stop squeezing avocados okay i'll stop squeezing avocados you make as if these things have feelings right you know these people these customers they love squeezing avocado they must stop this thing they must actually make a rule and a regulation for people to stop squeezing avocados because we get these complaints all the time <laughs> well, now that we know which one is a hairs and a fuerte, whichever has fuerte, uh, let's get cooking and remember no squeezing under any circumstances. Well, I think, I think the most important thing about uh, the squeezing avocados is, is, is that don't squeeze it until it's yours. You know, hey, Neil Anthony, there you go, that baby. is golden. Don't <laughs> squeeze it until it's yours. All right. Well, we're oh. going to make a delicious salad and it's paired with another South African favorite, the mm-hmm. good old nachi, right? Exactly. Yeah. So the thing is, you know, citrus is really great at the moment. It's citrus season and, you know, the citrus is also going to boost your immune system and all that, all that sort of stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, always get as much. And then, you know, the thing is, it also makes salads interesting. You know, salads aren't just, you know, leaves. You know what I mean? You need exactly. to make salads interesting because, you know, otherwise no one's going to eat them. Yeah. Flavor profiles, yeah. textures. And of course, uh, you know, one of the main components of a salad is a good dressing. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can do me a favor, this open is my that job for here. me. Okay. So that's just some oil in there. And then we've got some, some vinegar. You can rock with some lemon juice or something like that in there. And then chuck in some uh, poppy seeds there for me. I think those are poppy Lovely. seeds. Okay. You can go onion seeds, chia seeds, nigella seeds, anything you want. All of it? Yeah, all of it. Oh, there you go. And then you can chuck uh, a nice finely sliced red onion. Red onion is nice and sort of sweet. Mm-hmm. Let's get this all So that gives us some more sort of added oh, texture. Oh, oh, oh I sweetness. lost one. I lost one. That's okay. And then you can just Taylor Swift it. <laughs> what? You can just shake it up. Oh, wow. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, yeah. Boom. <laughs> Your and salad's then, gonna salad, salad, salad. <laughs> oh my yeah, word! You wanna, you wanna make sure you get a nice you know, solid uh, lid on there. That's Nicole fine. gave me very that's specific okay. instruction to hold it hold upright, it upright and, and to tight. shake yeah, this way. Okay. So uh, that's my own that's fault. You know. Sorry, wardrobe. <laughs> that's cool. That's and of course, then our hero ingredient is the uh, the house avocado, the house avocado. Mm-hmm. Um, I know most people probably know this, but the easiest way to take the uh, pip out is just to sort of pop a knife in there and do that. That looks so Obviously, good. Obviously, uh, watch uh, watch your fingers. I, I can imagine how many people have gone to hospital. With uh, with trying to take out an avocado pip and uh, yeah, yeah, popping yeah. a few stitches into their thumb, that's fine. <laughs> you know, boom, 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 like Good that. Stuff. There you go. Yet again, nice, uh, ni- nice green ripe avocados. Yeah, it's super simple. I mean, you can either you know just sort of cut them or just uh, oh, give a nice okay. little scoop. I think I like sort of just scooping them. It gives gives each one its own sort of individual texture, its an individual style. You know, you can sort of mix it and up. I feel like when you do that as well, when, when you use a spoon, you get the most out of the apple, Oh, yeah, for right? sure. Because yeah, sometimes you when you do cut it and yeah, you try you and peel back the skin, and, yeah, exactly. uh, you kind of, yeah. you know... Have you seen that thing it? nowadays where they're doing coffee inside an avocado skin? No way. Yeah, you can go to... When you get there, it's a new thing in LA. You can go to a... You can go to a coffee shop and they do a is latte. It, are, they, are they dried out? Or uh, is they it just scoop it out. Awesome. And, yeah, literally, you have like an avocado toast, which they serve, and oh, then you can eat brilliant. your, drink your coffee out of the avocado skin that you just have your 
toast on. That way you don't need yeah. to be throwing around cups. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look, I think it's a little awesome. bit uh, excessive. Really? Me, but yeah. I think yeah. it's brilliant. And then, of course, the thing is avocados have a lot of flavor. So the thing is, you know, the beauty of an avocado is it's a great sort of flavor carrier. So yes, you know, yes, here's, yes. A, here's, our, uh, here's our chance to, to really sort of amp up the flavor. Of course, you've got the, um, the dressing there that you've got all over your shirt as well, which is you also fun. You definitely have not gone sparingly on the no, salt No, for there. sure, yeah. you you, you got you to season them, you know, don't be shy. Yeah, and then again, that gives us a nice, you, you can nice a ripple effect on those things there. That looks great. Yeah, and then, you know, like we said, we've got our, uh, we've got our segments, our fruit segments, mm -hmm. pop those in there. This is a, this is, a, this is what, orange. What other fruits would go, go well? With any, any, I mean, citrus is good. What yeah, else? so citrus is good, obviously. Of course, you can go with a nice bit of cheese on here. You can, obviously, you know, the, obviously, apple and feta is a South African classic. Would apples work? Apples would work, yeah. A nice couple apples of apple, apple sticks, yeah, for sure. Apples and apples would work. You know, you get a nice, the you get a nice sort of, uh, sort of texture change. Pineapple? Which is always great. Yeah, pineapple, why not? Pineapple too. Okay. Why not? And then, what else? And then we've got some caramelized pecan nuts, which are also wow. a great uh, South African ingredient. It's this like is just sort of made like a sort of praline vibe. So just a little bit of caramel, and away you go. This reminds me of something we used to call tamalanki. Yeah, that, that, I thought, that's what I thought when I was chopping this. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so yeah, so, so boom, boom, boom. So I'm actually getting a, a correction now from our producers yeah. uh, that it is actually called the Hass. And not the Haas. And why is it spelled with two A's? Well, you know, Whoa, there, there's yeah. many things that we could go through in yeah. language that are spelled ways that they're not pronounced. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it is the Haas, the Haas. officially. Cool. Yes, last he's a We're on it. We're on it. Haas. Haas. And uh, the foot. Haas, Haas, baby. Haas, Haas, baby. And then, oh, a little sprinkling <laughs> of micro. A little bit of micro on there, of course. You know, it always makes things look a bit sort of funky and a bit and pretty. And super healthy, too. Yeah, oh, boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? That's it. That's you can. Wow. You can rock with that. So that's 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 that. That's beautiful. Pretty much, well yeah. done, Neil. Well done. So Thank you. try it out at home and, and be creative with the way that you put together your own individual braai for your braai. Yeah. Uh, entertain your guests. Uh, Don't just wow. leave your wife in the fridge. Uh, in the fridge. Your what? Don't leave your wife in the uh, in in the kitchen <laughs> making the slai and, and the and the, the mana the making fridge, the braai. Yeah. <laughs> don't put your wife in the fridge either. No. <laughs> so no. don't yeah, don't leave your wife in the in the kitchen making the making the braai salad. You know, get everyone involved. Yet again, this is nice little individual portions or nice sort of just down the middle of the table. Everyone tucks involved. Everyone tucks in. Yet again, you can. This is obviously vegetarian, but you could get some nice sort of cured hams on there and stuff oh, yes. like that to sort of to sort of, sort of vibe it up a bit. You know, and, uh, well done, and that's yeah. it. Hero. Nice one. Hero has. Make us some coffee in that. Yeah. Right. Now fire up the coals and throw your <laughs> throw the braai of all braais to celebrate your South African heritage this month. Don't forget to add a dollop of gratitude and a really good sprinkling of homegrown avo goodness. So for more avalicious recipes you can visit avocado.co.za. You can like at avo, uh, I love avocado SA on Facebook and follow at I love avos SA on Instagram. But whatever you do add an avo. and Avo, nurtured in South Africa.
love our animals on the show. We know that having a family pet can bring a huge amount of joy to any household. But unfortunately for some, this means dealing with pet allergies. Now, thankfully, there are some solutions that can be explored that allow you to keep your beloved pets while successfully managing your allergies at the same time. We're going to chat to allergist and pediatrician Professor Claudia Gray about how we can manage pet allergies in the home. Professor, very good morning. How are you? Morning. I'm very well, thank you. Great to connect with you again. And I think to discuss something that affects a huge amount of people, certainly in my family, my poor mom suffers from, from terrible pet allergies when, when it comes to my pups. But maybe you can explain to us a bit more expansively, what are pet allergies specifically and what symptoms can we experience? In general, an allergy is an exaggerated immune response to something that actually should be harmless. Um, so in the case of pet allergies, it's an exaggerated response to the proteins carried by pets. Now, now, most people think it's just the fur, mm. but in fact, it's also the skin cells, it's the saliva, and even the urine carried on the pets that can cause allergic reactions. And if you inhale that, or if you touch the pet, or if the pet licks you, you can come up with itchy eyes, red eyes, and itchy, sneezy nose. Uh, some people even wheeze quite acutely when they're exposed to certain pets. And it's one of the rare aero allergens, so airborne allergens that can actually cause skin issues. So a lot of kids, for example, who are allergic to dog, if they have contact with a dog's water bowl or if the dog licks them, they can come up with a skin reaction and hives. So a variety of manifestations in response to these pet proteins. And, and I've seen firsthand it can be quite extreme and it can come on the onset, can be so dramatically fast. I know I always ask you this whenever we deal with any particular allergy. Um, can we develop a pet allergy or is it something that we are born with? Is it genetic? So as with most allergies, there's often a genetic component. So the genetic tendency towards allergies, that's called atopy. But most people are not born with a pet allergy. It tends to develop over time. So first of all, I need to qualify. It's not a bad thing to have pets. It's actually a good thing in the allergy world because studies have shown that babies born into families with pre-existing pets may actually have reduced allergy levels in general. So a pet allergy develops over time. It can can develop in young children already, especially the pets that they're in contact with. It can develop at an older age. So pet allergies can develop at any stage of one's career. And it's amazing how, uh, certainly with my pup stuck, they'll identify the person who is least comfortable and they'll go straight to that person and lick their face off. That's just the way that they are. So does this mean that, that people who are extremely allergic to pets, do you have to avoid pets completely or is there a, a solution, some middle ground? Yeah, okay, so there are a couple of things there. The first thing to say is that some people do outgrow their pet allergies and some people in fact become immune or quite tolerant. And we see that often in households where people have had a dog for a long time, for example, and then the people then they'll say, actually, I'm fine with my own dog. But then as soon as they come into contact with somebody else's dog or a different breed, then they have severe reactions again. So you can actually become tolerant to your own pet. Some people outgrow the allergy. Some people get worse over time. But can we do something to reduce our reactivity if we don't want to uh, donate or get rid of our pets? Of course, they are the love of our lives. Um, so yes, so the, the first thing to say is that, number one, identify exactly what you're allergic to. So if there's a cat and a dog in the house, it's worth knowing, are you allergic to both? Are you more allergic to one? So it can guide families, for example, into getting the most appropriate pet for that family. Secondly, if you are allergic to a dog, for example, in your house, you can take certain measures to reduce your allergen exposure. For example, you could limit the dog to certain areas of the house. You could have a rule that the dog doesn't sit on a certain couch, which could catch a lot of its fur or dander or saliva. You could certainly, or you should certainly say that that dog should not sleep in your bedroom. So you're not breathing in that allergen all night long. Secondly, it helps to wash the animal quite frequently. And ideally you'd wash the animal outside so that you're not 
getting the allergens into the house. So even washing once every week or once every two weeks helps tremendously to reduce the allergen burden of a pet. Um, thirdly, of course, you would um, wash your hands when you've handled the, the pet. So quite a few things that you can do to reduce your exposure to that pet. And when you vacuum the house, this should be done quite frequently and ideally with a good a vacuum cleaner with what we call a HEPA filter, which is a high efficiency particulate matter filter. And that also helps to reduce the dog and cat dander. And of course, medication plays a role. So you might need to medicate daily with an antihistamine or a nose spray to reduce your symptoms. And the last tier of allergy management, which we've mentioned before on this show, is the desensitization process, which you can also do to dogs and cats. So certainly there are measures you can do to reduce your allergen exposure. The puppies can stay. There is a solution. Professor, thank you so much. Always wonderful to connect with you. Thank you for your insights this morning. Absolute pleasure. Thanks very much. Uh, we all deserve to live allergy-free with our beloved pets. And with the right care and management, allergy symptoms can be kept at bay. Allergex non-drowsy can assist you with allergy relief for the entire day. And it is non-drowsy, allowing you to enjoy life and your pets allergy-free. Um, and of course, Allergex non-drowsy syrup is also suitable for kids two years and older, which is amazing. Free to be you. Live, work, play, sleep, allergy-free with Allergex Non-Drowsy. Well, here's something to put a smile on your face uh, because we know that nothing makes us happier than giving you at home the opportunity to win big. It's your chance to get rewarded with points and so much more with Buy Smart when you buy Tiger Brands products. And of course, you stand a chance to win incredible prizes weekly on Expresso, such as a queen size bed, mm. a fridge, a washing machine, mm. and a smartphone. Mm, those mm -hmm. prizes just sound delicious. Yeah. Now, signing up for Buy Smart is simple and it all happens on WhatsApp or by scanning the QR code. You can earn points for qualifying purchases on products like Jungle Oats, Tastic, Cool, Albany and more. Your daily grocery list yeah. basically can get you an opportunity to win big. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is send hi to <laughs> WhatsApp or on WhatsApp hi to 072-897-6278 and follow the steps or open your camera and scan this QR code that's on the screen right now to get the link uh, for you to sign up. Browse, buy smart promos and products, upload your till slip when you have purchased qualifying products and receive points for your purchases and then of course use those points to unlock rewards like airtime, yeah. data, yeah, well, shopping vouchers yeah. and a whole lot more. It's quick, it's very easy and you can sign up on the go. Reminder that this month you will stand a chance to win weekly prizes when you sign up. A queen size bed, yes. a fridge, mm -hmm. a washing machine mm -hmm. and a smartphone are up for grabs. T's and C's applying can be found on expressoshow.com. So here's the QR code again. It's there for you to use. Sign up today to stand a chance of going into the draw for the first weekly prize next Thursday. It could be your lucky day. We're crossing fingers for you. Good luck. Get rewarded for your shopping choices with Buy Smart. Send hi on WhatsApp to 072-897-6278 and follow the steps. You will stand a chance of winning incredible prizes weekly on Expresso.
Feel Good Breakfast Show, Expresso here on SABC3. Now, in recent years, we've become a lot more conscious about our food, and we want to know what is it, where is it from, and how is it made? So it's only natural that we begin asking these same questions when it comes to our pet's food, right? And if we're going to eat quality food, so should they? Absolutely. And today we're joined by Christina Debier, the animal nutritionist from Ultra Pet, who is here to answer all of those questions and share some uh, inside information at the world-class Ultra Pet factory where all the food magic happens. Christina, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. Christina, the Ultra Pet Factory has been recognized as world class. What makes it so special exactly? Well, it's a brand new facility which we built in 2017 at a cost of about 150 million rand. And with this new facility, we went overseas to look at all the best equipment and the newest technology that we can possibly find. And all of that has been incorporated into this factory. We've also added coating into our system, which means we can actually increase the taste of the kibbles to make sure that the dogs and the cats eat the food. And we can also add real fresh meat into the product. So we take fresh meat from the chiller and we actually add it into the dry extruded kibbles. Christina, pet lovers and pet owners will tell you that uh, ultra pet food recipes are amazing, but how are these recipes developed? It's actually a lot of research that goes into these different recipes. So we would look at a lot of different types of ingredients and what nutritional contributions they bring to the table. And then we would play around with different combinations of these ingredients to get the best possible taste with the most nutritional value that we can find out of them. So we do a lot of also with the final product um, at kennels where we have 20 dogs and 20 cats we actually feed this product, these products to the kennel, to the dogs at the kennels. And they would tell us which taste they prefer and we would also test the digestibility to see how well this product actually um, sustains their bodies. Christina, you are producing massive volumes every single month. And like you mentioned earlier, the Ultra Pet Food uses real meat in the recipes, which is great. Uh, what's your safety and testing procedures? Um, we have two testing facilities on our site. And one is the main laboratory, which tests all the incoming raw materials to make sure it has all the nutritional value that it needs and it meets our safety standards. Um, and they also do all the, the long tests, the difficult tests, which we then use as a calibration process for the laboratory, which is in the, lab, in the factory. That lab is right next to the manufacturing um, line. And we take samples every hour from that line and we test every single nutrient that we claim on the bag to make sure that it's still nutritionally balanced. So any customer can give us the batch number of their specific product and we can give them an hourly result of that specific batch. And lastly, why would you recommend pet owners switch over to Ultra Pet? Well, apart from all the testing that we do and all the research that we do, we are also FSC um, 22,000 accredited, which is also a human food safety standard that we use in the factory. We also have a lot of local people that are pet parents themselves, and they wouldn't produce anything that they wouldn't want to eat, feed to their fur babies. So there's a lot of passion in this factory, and it's always wonderful to see. And you also get the added benefit of the ultra sure. I mean, you get pet, pet accident coverage just by purchasing a bag. What more would you want? Ah, uh, well, you have sold it to me completely. Thank you very much for joining us and having a chat with me this morning, Christina. Thank you so much for having me. And that was Christina De Beer, of course, nutritionist at Ultra Pet. Now, Ultra Pet food is formulated using the combined expertise of both animal nutritionists and vets to create a range of high-quality dog food that your pet will love. Now, to explore the Ultra Dog and Ultra Cat pet food range, you can go on to www.ultra-pet.co.za. Uh, it's so good to find out about our furry little munchkins and how we can look after them. But before the show ends and comes to that sad finish, we've got some magic just for you. Again, we're catching up with Nadia Nike, of course, and she's chilling with Jamie for our last little catch-up. So let's see what the crew are up to. <laughs> We are still hanging out with the beautiful Nadia Nakai ahead of her, you know, debut album tonight, yes. dropping at midnight, everybody spilling all the tea. But you didn't let us know that there was, you know, the love of your life has been spending time with you during lockdown. Mm -hmm. We are talking about Jaeger. Yeah, my dog. It's the dog, everybody. But 
The thing is this, like Jaeger was supposed to come today, but he's not feeling too well. He's not feeling too well. I was worried that he he was just looking too skinny. So I was just like, <laughs> so we took him to the vet yesterday and I think he has worms, so I just have to give him medication. Well, they did say that this is the medication you need to give the dog. <laughs> That's the dog. That's what I'm giving him. So he's not. And also, he's like, I'm not a morning person. <laughs> he's like, I can't do he's this early like, morning. Yeah, I can't do this. He's stressing out. This and I've no. been overworked already because he's on my show as well that I'm shooting right now. And he's like a cast member. Like he has a role. <laughs> he's working. He's like curing <laughs> the dead. Exactly. How yeah. do you know? Like he was the one. Take us to the journey of like meeting him for the first and be like, oh, this is Jaeger. I want to take you home with me. Well, out of his litter, he was the only one that had a blue eye, one blue eye. So obviously that was a given. And also the fact that he used to walk skew. He didn't walk straight. He, he always walks like, like angled. <laughs> and he was the smallest out of all of them. So I was just like, I even thought he was premature because he was so small. But I was like, no, you have to come home with me because he's so small. And then in the car, he literally like climbed up my arm all the way up the seat. Like he was just like a climber. And I knew that this one is going to rock my world because I don't like well-behaved dogs. I want dogs that are just doing drama <laughs> he's that dog so yeah and now obviously moving into a brand new space your new home does he feel like does he know he's actually a dog does no that's his house <laughs> like someone on twitter actually was like please can i make a portrait of jaeger to put in your house i'm like hell no he really thinks this is his house now you want pictures on the wall he's gonna think that i'm renting from him he really thinks he thinks that's his house for oh, i'm sure yeah. you and jaeger has like a jam-packed schedule for the rest of the tweet uh, yeah what can we expect uh, more from nadia nakai and jaeger Jaeger is just really comfortable sleeping in my bed right now, so I don't think he has anything planned other than slumber. But for me, it's the, obviously the Nadia Naked Deluxe album is coming out. Um, I've got a project. I've got, got a few projects actually coming out, which is a blessing during um, this pandemic that we're in right now. Um, but you know gag orders, eh? <laughs> what? I can't tell you. Gag orders, you know? Uh, just like closures. <laughs> but there are a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm kind of venturing into a different aspect. It is still associated with music, but I'm creating my own content as well right now. So it's like a production company that's shooting some stuff, which is very exciting. Putting it out there in the universe. I feel yes. like you've, again, we, we spoke about the humble beginnings. Mm. If you like taking back where you are now, did you ever feel like you'd be at the space where you're now thinking of even having your own production company? I think I've always been a dreamer. But it actually happening is two different things. You can always say, like, I, I know, like, I want to win a Grammy. That's always going to be in my head. But the day that you win it is, you can never prepare for stuff like that, you know? So I've always known that I wanted big things and I really want it. I'm not a person that's scared of hard work. And when it comes, it's still very exciting, even though you told yourself that you're going to do it. Listen, you have been a gift to us this morning on Thank this special show. So we thought we would give you and Jaeger a little gift. I, I got this little doggy toy oh, for him. But also our friends at Ultra Hello, Dog this. sent you, like, sent him the most amazing food because we know that he is sick so also next card I know you guys will be traveling a lot for the rest yeah. of 2020 so if he doesn't like to deworm him get him all the food yes. make sure that his body is in top shape because you know he's taking over your life thank you and it's fine because he's my child people don't understand <laughs> he's like my kids so I really appreciate that I actually needed dog food this so is fantastic chicken is his favorite and I'm so happy he's actually on the packet so I know for <laughs> sure it's for Boston Terriers it's definitely for his breed so fantastic no, Kai, thank you so much for thank an amazing Amazing morning hanging out with you. We are looking forward to what you're still going to do in this space. We can't wait for tonight. 12 o'clock, everybody. Midday. Midnight. Midnight. midnight, midnight, midnight sorry. Mid, midnight. Yes. The brand new album drops. Of course, we brought you the exclusive right to your Feel Good Breakfast show. But of course, we have so much more magic coming your way. But for me and Nadia Nakar, yeah. ciao, ciao. Where am I? Oh, great to wake up with Nadia Nakai on a Superstar. Thursday morning. Wow, wonderful stuff, eh? Absolute superstar. Well done, Jamie, on bringing us yet another awesome exclusive up in Jersey. Well, we're going to continue our conversation live on Facebook in just a moment with a couple of absolute gems, really interesting stuff. I suppose something a lot of us are grappling with at the moment. We're going to ask, so now what? Level two. Oh, what do we exactly. do? Yeah, so coming to grips with operating under lockdown level two, Eitan Stern from legalese.co.za is here to chew on that gristle. Yeah, and talk about operating. Let's talk operating systems. Elon Musk apparently has installed installed a chip into a pig's brain, calling it, calling it Neuralink. New and uh, Grant Hines will give us the lowdown on that tech talk. Ah. And then at 10 past 8, we connect with you on our social media, taking a look at all of those comments that you guys have put through to us, how we can reduce our ecological impact. Something so to look happening. forward mm. to as well. Fortnite competition hamper giveaway on our ah, Facebook ah, Live. Yeah. Ah, ah, yeah. And straight off the show, of course, I'm going to take you through some isometric and eccentric training. We're getting strong. We're getting ham. Pow, pow, pow. Yeah. Do this bright and early tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs> Espresso Show, made with love by Clover.
Another feel-good production.